Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Virtual Gathering 2020. Your hosts, Matt Bailey and Andrew Derbidge. We're going to go live. We're not, we're not about to go live. We are live now uh, with the Society, um, going live on our group, our page, our YouTube. Thank you so much for joining in. It's a whiskey tasting. It's a virtual whiskey tasting. And I'm going to go through just a couple of things to start us off of what will make the best of your tasting tonight. I don't need these right now. Um, it was a good look. It was, yes, it's my radio look, <laughs> but it's it's uh, I'm not. I'm just, it's only one way tonight. So um, you've got. Hopefully, if you're watching this right now, you've got your green gathering packs. First of all, I want to thank everyone for j joining in uh, all of our real gathering tastings over the last few days. We've had Sydney, Canberra, Brisbane over the last few days, and Hobart's next week. Really looking forward to that going on ahead as well. Uh, to make the most of your night tonight, you'll need your pack. You'll need some glassware. You don't have to use one glass for each. You can use one and rinse as you go. If you do have five society glasses or five nice whiskey glasses of some description, that will make a huge difference to the enjoyment of each whiskey. And you've got your tasting notes, which are in that little red envelope, which I'll show you here in your pack. So you can take them out. We'll need them as we go along tonight. And then I'll talk through the order in a second. I also recommend having a water carafe, something you can add a bit of water to each whiskey if you feel so. We'll talk about you know, each whiskey, and if it goes well with water or not, we'll make sure it, it works either way. What do you reckon? I reckon that's a good way to go about it. <laughs> um, and, and a big shout out to everyone. It's it's a bit ironic uh, having a gathering at a time when we, we can't really gather in some places. Um, but uh, look, well done and congratulations to the 84 people around Australia who acquired and purchased this pack. There's uh, 84 packs went out, uh, 30 in Victoria, 29 in New South Wales. Uh, in fact, Every state except South Australia. Yeah, right. Every state is represented tonight. Even um, uh, we got one one pack went up to Northern Territory. Hi to Damon up there. Uh, two went down to the ACT. G'day to Luke and Nick tuning in down there as well. And a good chunk went to uh, Western Australia and Queensland uh, as well. So uh, and one in Tassie, uh, of course. Mark. Mark. Uh, compulsory. Mark. Yeah. Compulsory. Yeah. yeah. But you guys, Tassie have got their big gathering next week, so Indeed. we didn't expect too many tap packs to go down for this one. Uh, oh, and um, Jeremy and Tassie's got his pack as well. So thank you so much, Jeremy, for grabbing one of those. Whilst we're doing shout outs as well, a big shout out and a very special happy birthday to our friend, colleague, and in my case, often saviour, Susie Tours. It's her uh, birthday today. I believe, happy birthday, she's, Susie. believe she's turning 39. Um, 39. So <laughs> well, well done and many happy returns, Susie. Yes, happy birthday, Susie. Fantastic. Um, so good to see everyone tuning in. Good to see you, Scott, Jay Davis, Darren, Yuri, everyone who's tuning in. There's a lot of people on the stream right now, so we won't do shout outs for everyone, but so good to see you all. And our friend from far up north, Mark Westmoreland, um, loving what you guys are doing through these trying times. Go, guys, Matt and Andrew. Awesome. And big shout out to Wolfburn, of course, as always. Um, happy birthday, Susie, from Alex Moores. Good on you, Alex. Okay. So you've got your drones in front of you. We're just going to make sure that we get the order right to begin with so there's no confusion because <laughs> the order that they're in the pack is going to be different from how we're going to actually taste them, and that's that's quite important. So the order you want to put them in is we're going to start with 26.145 Mood Lifting Sanctuary followed by 10.195. Uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> Shiver Me Timbers. And that's right, we're going from the 26 to the 10, then we go to the 7.243. Yeah, yeah, did you just hear a collective 84 people go, what? what? What are you doing? Why are you doing it that way? There is reasons behind it. There is reasons behind it. This is the order that has been picked by our global ambassador, John McShane. And big shout out to John. Indeed. G'day, John. And then so, yeah, we're going 26, 10, 7.243, 35.259, and then, of course, finishing on 53.332. So that's the order you want to have on in front of you right now. And uh, that's the order we're going to go with for tonight. Okay, what do you reckon? I reckon we uh, we crack our first one open. It's uh, it's Saturday. I don't know about where you are right now, but it's a bit chilly in in old Sydney town. Um, oh, and I'm in the sort of mood to crack open and something from Distillery Twenty Six. I think I'm in the mood for something from Distillery Twenty Six as well. Wow, mm. what are the odds? We've got one right here. Crikey! Would wow, you how that? did that happen? Yes. So twenty six point one four five. This is also a gathering, global gathering, bottling of another twenty six. Those who jumped on the twenty six point one four seven. Uh, it's only two cast numbers away from this one, which is the Australian exclusive. So you don't have to drink the whole lot in one go if you don't want. You can pour it just a bit into your glass. It's 25 mils. I'll just pour a bit there. That's enough to start me off on that one. And uh, this is in our Juicy Oak and Vanilla flavour profile. We use 12 flavour profiles at the Society to 
uh, broadly define each of the uh, each of the whiskies. And if you open on your pack on the inside of the lid, there's a um, a list of all twelve flavor profiles just there. Uh, that was a fantastic thing at uh, our gathering tasting last night in Sydney, um, and I was at a table where uh, there was a lot of emphasis amongst. Uh, I, I suppose you'd say there were newer members um, uh, very early in their in their whiskey journey, and they found the whole concept of the flavour profiles fantastic, which is exactly what they're designed to do. To, to yeah, a find be a wonderful way of categorising uh, the, the style and flavour of whiskey, and b being able to identify what you like. Yeah, exactly. Or don't, yeah. Or don't, or like. don't but, like. Yeah. yeah. And, they, and they're really useful for newcomers into the society, people who are trying these whiskies for the first time, as Andrew said, just to really discover these flavours as we go along. Um, last drop to 29 degrees, says Darren Howe. It's chilly up in Cairns tonight. Wow. <laughs> and it gets below 30. That's, that's, that's a worry out there, isn't it? Yeah. Orange syrup for days. That's a good early tasting. Let's have, let's have a nose. Let's have a nose. Yeah, I've got that, yeah. So cheers. Good to gather with you. Good, happy gathering. Mm. Now there's something about 26s that I've. It is not an, an not a, a controversial tasting note, but there's often a waxiness to them. <laughs> you said controversial tasting note, given the discussions around the world in the last <laughs> week. I suddenly panicked. Then <laughs> no, but, uh... no, no, no. It's it's a it's a waxy note. There's, there's a set of a almost like I, I call it like a an old sort of suede jacket. It's funny. Uh, waxy is a word you hear a lot. The other one that's often um, used in combination is apple skins. Apple skins, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and then some people make the link between, you know, the wax that they actually put on apples, the stuff that you rub off at the supermarket. So you get that, that link there yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, all right. Now, do you, do you get that waxiness on this? I mean, not immediately. No, no it didn't leap out at me. I like James' comment here, almost like an orange Barocca. Orange Barocca? Yeah. Let's throw that one up. There we go. That's a good call, James. Um. So we're going with juicy oak and vanilla. It says here the nose was floral and waxy. There you go. Uh, attractive and what, what, what would we know? <laughs> vanilla candles, marshmallows, perfumed pear, crystallized orange and lemon slices, and someone smoking a cigar outside a florist. Mm, I like that. That's a cool note. I get the florist. The, the guy hasn't lit up yet on, on mine. There is, there is a slight hint of tobacco note in there, just a little bit on the back of the nose. Just some leaf, tobacco leaf. Mm, yeah, yeah, leaf, yeah. So just remembering, this is 58.0%. For those who might not be as uh, familiar with cast drink whiskies, I know a lot of you are, but I saw a lot of new members buying these packs, which is great. 58% um, is the natural cask strength of this spirit. So that's the finished proof of that spirit after it's been maturing for eight years in a second fill X bourbon barrel. So it's it's maintained a very high proof at 58. So you may wish to add a drop of water. We might try. I'm going to try it neat first. I always recommend trying it neat first, seeing how it sits at 58%. And then um... appreciating, of course, that every every cask is different and uh, they get filled at different strengths. Some of them get uh, watered down to a certain strength when they're filled for the purposes of trading between the companies and where it goes to from there in terms of how much evaporates over time will be a function of climate and whereabouts it is in the, in the, in the country and um, whereabouts it sits in the warehouse as well. But 58%, that's a, that's a good entry-level dram in, uh, yeah. in my book. That Ooh. that fruit is really coming out. You are okay there? Yeah, it's <laughs> big, is it? It's big, yeah. It's bigger on the palate. I, I haven't got to the palate yet, but the nose is still offering up a lot of fruit. I think it's it's uh, it's almost an injustice to put this in uh, the juicy oak and vanilla category because uh, I think there's a bit of a sweet fruity and mellow going on on the nose. I haven't tasted it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think you might change your mind on the palate. No, okay, yeah. all right. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, I'll dive in. Cheers. Uh, I also meant to mention you can print out your custom tasting map for tonight. It's on the uh, event page and on our product page for this uh, for this pack. So if you don't have it already, Craig Morton, that's a cool tasting note. I meant to say before, sorry. And evening to Annalisa. Good to see you both last night. That was great. That is hot-ish. Hot-ish. Yeah. See yes. what I mean? It's got it's got a it's got a, yeah. a zest to it. It's a yes. It's a, a lemon zest. Um, wow! Air freshener hiding cigar smoke. Okay, there was a. Yeah. Boy, that's a, that's a teenage memory, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm not going to waste time with this, folks. I'm reaching straight for the water because I I think it could do with some. Um, now it's a youthful whiskey. It's only eight years old. 
Um, so it's at eight years, it's still got that uh, those volatiles. It's still got a little bit of mellowing out to do, perhaps. Mm. Uh, so look, no surprise that it uh, it's a little bit aggressive. You're going to do likewise. Yeah, or? I'll do the same. Yeah, mm. thanks, um, Dominic. We're starting with uh, with the uh, twenty six. The mood lifting sanctuary twenty six to one four five. Yeah, uh, Dan, Dan, Dan up in uh, Brisbane. Good to see you, mate. Uh, I agree with your comment here. Quite hot benefits from a drop or two of water. Mm. Cheers to the Queensland gang and all the other members of the QMWS up there as well. Our good friends and colleagues. Ooh, Prosecco note is spot on. Getting loads of champagne, sparkling wine, etc. Joel, Joel, it's a cool note. A drop of water will open that one right up. I think that's actually on the nose straight away. That nose is far more, it's absolutely uh, far more enjoyable. widened, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> We've gone to Dolby Surround from stereo to Dolby Surround straight away with that nose. Wow. Mm. Well, I, um, yep, juicy oak and vanilla was where this belongs yeah. on the palate now. Now that it's watered down, I can taste that juice, that oak and that vanilla. But uh, Even with water added, I think it still could take more. It's, it's, it's got, it's, it's prickly, but in a pleasant way. Yeah, like, like prickly fruit. And well, I'm almost thinking, um, have you ever had uh, dishes cooked with nettles? No. It's actually, it's, it's a tactile thing as well. Yeah, but, right. uh, you know, nettle soup. Our good friend Franz Schurer makes a fantastic dish. Yeah, with nettles. yeah right. I will consider naming this my darling Clementine, says James Caden. If that day. song is in my head later tonight, James, you're, <laughs> you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, look, I'm with you. I, I was conservative at, at first, but I think maybe it could take a splash more. Mm. Oh, tell you what, you should have seen the oils just separate then in a big way. Hold up. Oh, absolutely. Lots of ripple on the surface. If you do add water, folks, um, particularly with this one, just seeing how much oil is in there, make sure you really give that water a chance to, uh, to to get in and for the two to mix. Stick your hand on top, give it a good swirl, give that opportunity for the, the two things to get together there. Wow. And, oh, fruit, fruit galore. Water turns the nose into those chalky chocolate clinkers. Do you know clinkers? Yes, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, I good had call. For 10 years. That, good I remember call. those. They were great. Yeah. I hope they still make. Let's still make those. Just a clinker still a thing. I'm sure they that was great. That was yeah. great. They've probably got a different name now. Yeah. Well. Someone somewhere would have been offended by the term clinker. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say that. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's my family name. You can't yeah. call them those. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> oh, James, you're on fire tonight, and now tastes like someone has dropped some marshmallows into a glass of bubbly. See, that's the. the I think it's a really good first dram as well. Yeah, like it's like it's it's this the kind of drama that sparks the sort of it's a real sort of sparks imagination. And it's very fizzy, effervescent. Um, what I did just then was I added a tiny bit more from my sample bottle, and added almost equal measure of water, and it still held up really well. Mm. That's amazing. Oh, yeah, having added a lot of water now to, to what's in my glass, it's starting to bring out some of the more lemon citrus notes. And I'll tell you what it's also brought out, man, that waxiness. It's fine. It's, yeah. it's it's, really it's, it's, there it's, in it's, spades, it's, yeah. Definitely needs water. Tastes, uh, takes the Australian edge off it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Ooh. Uh, Careful, Joel, don't get me started on that note. <laughs> uh, great distillery to visit, by the way. Not many people make the journey because it's a fair bit uh, further up north. You've got to uh, get up to, to Inverness and then keep going north beyond that, mm. um, up in the in the village of Brora there. Um, but uh, fantastic area to go, particularly if you like a lot of the, the prehistoric Neolithic sites that uh, are dotted and scattered around Scotland as well. Uh, but, yeah, great place to go and a very... Very welcoming distillery. I think they appreciate the fact that people make the effort to, to go the extra mile uh, to get up to them, and so they're very accommodating and hospitable when you're there. Third most northerly? Uh, fourth. Well, on the mainland? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. on mainland. Sorry, yeah. On mainland. Okay, so what's up there? Wolfburn, Old Pulteney. Yes, you'd be right. And yeah, then third off. Yeah, it'll be third, third, and then third. Balblair's just a bit below, isn't it? Yeah, Balblair's just below it. Oh, yeah. and Glenmorangie's in the neck of woods as well. Yeah. But then you're getting into the thick of it where they are. Mm. So yeah, that's um yeah, it's 
I, th I think it's a really lovely, lovely place to start tonight. And uh, some awesome tasting notes coming through. Please throw your um, tasting notes. And by the way, on the comment stream, your tasting notes, your comments, your questions. We're taking them all tonight. Throw them up. And Andrew and I will discuss them. It's uh, with his and his schedule and mine. It's rare that we're in the same room at the same time. Sometimes, so this is great if we can. We are in the same room. Is it just... This is this is actually there's a virtual divide here somewhere. <laughs> Split camera. You can't even tell. Um, but yeah, it's a uh, wow. Very cool. That is a very cool first whiskey to start. Absolutely. On. Yeah. And um, uh, we hosted a great plainly tasting. Um, oh, he said it. He said it. I, one nil. No, no, I didn't. I didn't well, I'm not referring to this whiskey. I'm not uh, referring to this whiskey. Come on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're not allowed to say the distillery names, and we shouldn't. Um, but it is. Uh, we hosted a great 26 tasting uh, <laughs> last month. Um, and uh, so a big shout out to to Katie and the team at Diageo and the team at. Um, uh, whiskey and almond for helping put all that together. That was fantastic, and I think it's if I had something like that as well to present, that would have been uh, fantastic. Yeah, would have been a, a good contrast to, to what else was uh, was in that lineup. Yeah, it would have been. Mm. Yeah, we had some we had some awesome SMWS twenty sixes in there, but it was um, yeah, it was just it's they're always they're always fascinating. We've had some a great string of young and old twenty six through uh, through the canon, and, and we've had a good string of young ones, which I think are, the spirit quality really shines, really shines mm. in a positive way. Yeah. Shall we? We shall. So, Controversy Corner. Controversy Corner. Whiskey number two, moving on to something with yes. a green flavour profile. So, John McShane, our global ambassador. Um, by the way, you can keep a bit in your glass as you go along, of course. We're just going to we're gonna taste through them. and Just, you know, that really satisfying sound when you pop a whiskey and you get that, that pop of the cork? Yeah. This is almost. Uh, it's almost. It's, uh, almost as satisfying. Yeah, it's got, a, it's got a good clack to it, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So John, our global ambassador, um, decided that uh, he wanted to uh, uh, mix things up a bit in the lineup. Oh, <laughs> bloody hell! Can you smell that already? Sorry, I'm I keep cutting in. But <laughs> uh, that 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 cigar bloke who lit up outside the florist has just walked into the room. That, <laughs> my goodness! And he wanted to also showcase just how interesting and complex a whiskey can be, even at a young age. Uh, something like this, which if you look at your tasting notes and look at the detail on this cask, it's a six-year-old whiskey, a six-year-old single-cask whiskey, um, which is almost un like it's it's a very young whiskey by anyone's Well, point. I'm not sure. In, in, in Isla circles? No, maybe not so much in Isla circles. In Isla circles, no. it's, uh, it's increasingly coming par for the course. Of course, our, our good friends at, uh, at Ardbeg uh, just released a five-year-old quite recently. Yeah, yep, they did. Kill Homan have put out uh, young whiskies around this age for a, for a long time. And um, a lot of three to five-year-old whiskey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, I mean, even just looking at the colour on that, that's picked up a lot of colour. Hasn't it just? I was actually looking at the cast type. So Refill Hogshead slash HTMC, HTMC, heavily toasted. Medium char. Medium char. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So HTMC is a cast treatment uh, process which the society has been sort of experimenting with in both first and second fill. Uh, I remember we had a 53 dot something something about a year we had ago. A lot of 53 something something. Even yeah. a 53 something something in tonight. Yeah. We had a 53 dot something last year which was called Whiskey for Shellfish People, yes. which is probably one of the best names of yeah. whiskey ever. Yeah. Uh, and that was a full maturation in a second fill HTMC and it was one of my favourite whiskies. So I always keep a little bit of an eye out for these and mm. and and Distillery 10 uh uh, is one of the most, I think, probably one of the more diverse uh, outputs of spirit uh, in Isla. Certainly these days, since mm. uh, uh, ownership changed a while ago, uh, they've really branched out on what they're doing. You know, the, this distillery used to do a couple of very experimental peated runs. There was one in 94, there was one in 97, and then nothing. And then when the new owners took over, first thing they started doing was peated campaigns for a period each year. I believe, look, last I heard, that was it was only a three-week, campaign i think for memory each year each year yeah right uh but they obviously pumped it out because there's enough mm. of the of the peated stuff around they may have increased that uh sense but so i mean let let me just put that into perspective actually i'll read this there you go charred smoked ham awesome tasting note nice one Good call, Nick. Yeah, yeah very cool and um uh bacon sandwiches from james caden and darren has wee beasties younger cousin or oh, okay, older cousin older, older, older cousin, cousin yeah. slightly older cousin yeah um uh, we're already on to these. No, James, I was explaining before that the, the lineup is is a bit of a curveball. We're going from 26 to 10 to 7 to 35 to 53. So um, 
Uh, where was I? I can't remember. It doesn't matter. But we it, were on our. Yeah, we were. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a very diverse spirit character that comes out of Distillery 10. Uh, and the unpeated ones I personally love, and I love the peated ones, but even something like this is is quite, uh, it's brash, but it's it's very balanced. I'm getting, uh, Keenan's getting barbecued honey pork, ash and cigar smoke on the I nose. agree with ash. That's a good call, ash, definitely. It's it's funny actually that I I had an opportunity to talk with um some of the some of the guys from the distillery from Distillery Ten Distillery Ten, and some of the guys who work in the warehouses will tell you that some of their favourite spirit that comes out of the distillery is between sort of six to nine years of age, and their 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 lowest age statement in the core range is a twelve year old whiskey, but these guys who are making it love it at a younger age. And it's quite funny the way now we are able to taste these kind of things like this in single cast format as a six-year-old whiskey. And and what's going on in that glass is unbelievable. And it's almost like we're tasting something that the distillers themselves and those who make the spirit would prefer to drink it at. Actually, uh, James has said something here which I agree with. It smells a little bit like the chick. Oh, really? Okay. Mm. I, can, I can get elements of that. That's, uh, that's not an outrageous call. And you're right, Craig. It is an earthy, uh, earthy palate. Have a taste of that. Ooh! <laughs> wow, that is very, Ooh. very drying on the finish as well. Wow, that smacks you on the mid palate, doesn't it? That's that heavily toasted medium medium char coming home to roost. Right there. Wow. Like bacon jam. 59.8% and you can taste every bit of that there. Not in a nasty way. Oh, this is, uh, you know, the, the, our first jam came across quite hot. This one for me is is not hot, but it's a it's a big bruiser uh, of alcohol there. Do you get that smoked paprika thing? That, that's Very like, much so, yeah. The yeah. yeah, paprika note, like. Mm. In fact, if you, if you could... Crystallize this. This would be a it would be a sensational uh, dry rub to put on uh, on your next um, bit of steak for a, for a smoky barbecue. Uh, a great, great question here coming through. Could someone please remind me of the tasting order, please and thanks? We're going twenty six, then we're going to the ten. We're on the ten now, then the seven, then the thirty five, then the fifty three. An ashen barbecue grill that just cooked bacon and prawns. I don't get so much of the prawns, but I get what you mean with the bacon, like the bacon sandwiches. Um, our good friend Nick has just uh, put the tasting order up. You want to just bring that one up so everyone can see it? That might help us. Here well. we go. Yeah, nice one. So I'll leave that there for a moment. That's our tasting order. If you want to write that down or put numbers on your tasting map for which one we're going through by which one. Oh, I could nose that for a long time. This 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 is one of those great on, yeah. islas that just keeps delivering with each new sniff. And and uh, look, so those of you who've come to tastings I've hosted would have heard me say this before. But if all you're getting is smoke and peat on this, you're not trying hard enough. There is so much more going on, and I really encourage you to to look below the smoke and look for all the fantastic complex elements that are going on underneath there as well. One of the ways that I like to do that, as Andrew said, one of the ways I like to do that to find those complex elements, those other flavors going on in a whiskey, rather than just saying, "Oh, that's sweet" or "that's smoky." Let's say this is sweet and smoky, and it is. It's got that sort of bacon fat, smoked paprika kind of notes going on. But how do we get to bacon fat? And how do we get to smoked paprika? We just drill down on be either food elements that we know and love and have experienced, or just drill down from the actual sort of core of what you're saying. So if I say something sweet, what kind of sweetness? Is it white sugar sweetness? Is it brown sugar? Is it uh, what is it? What kind of is it like a white chocolate sweetness? Is it you know there's sort of all sorts of honey, honey's a good one. Honey, honey, sweetness. honey sweetness exactly. Yeah. So different types of sweetness and is it, or is it like a saccharine sweeten or is it um, what do they call them? Um, sweet and low? What do you call it? Artificial oh, equal sweetener. Equal tablets. And equal tablets. Yeah. Aspartame. Yeah. yeah, you might get a note of aspartame or, or uh, equal or something in a in a whiskey, and that's that's a unique flavor profile. So that's sweet, but it, we're drilling down from where, where we began. Now, we, we can hear you. We can hear these undercurrents of what the hell are we drinking this for at number two, and, and Darren's just said interesting choice for number two. It is an interesting choice, but 
order is a very interesting thing. So just keep this in mind when we come to whiskey number three. Yeah. Because imagine how number three is going to taste off the back of this. Indeed. Yeah. That was funny with all those numbers up there. I actually thought I was playing lotto at home. <laughs> well, so people were commenting bingo. Yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just doing quickly what I should have done before. Here we go. Because it uh, says medicinal. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Good call from you. Pineapple chunks with Demerara sugar on the barbecue. I think this is one that's going to give a lot more off just by warming the glass as well. I mean, John's reasoning behind this, Alex, and a few people are asking why we'd go from juicy oak and vanilla to peated and then back out of the peated category is because there's no rules. He said this before. John has said this a number of times. There's no rules with how to how to actually appreciate and how to and what flavors you're getting out of this. It's it, we can move around between and it actually probably I'd say even sparks your palate a bit differently as we go through these and so actually might sort of change a few cogs and say, oh wow, that actually works in that order in the end. Just because I'm a clinical sort of guy, I am going to add a little bit of water just to see where it goes. I don't think it needs it, but why not? Mm. It was compulsory when we were on the tasting panel. We had to. We always had to add water, to, whether we wanted to or not, to see where the, the dram went. Wow. That really brings out a savoury note that wasn't there before. Just a bit of that, like, digestive biscuits. There's a bit of that, yeah. yeah like on the... Like smoky digestives. I'm actually getting a uh, a, a, a meat note, protein, um, and I'm toying between whether it's pulled pork or a, a nice marinated piece of beef. But dark toffee. Oh yes, wow. on the nose. There's that sweetness. The, the sweetness is dark toffee. See, there you go. That's that's not just saying something's sweet. That's saying something's dark toffee. We're moving down a bit further here. That's two good contributions from Nick now. Yeah, well done, Nick. Well, you, well, I'd you, love to promote your, him. Your, yeah. <laughs> your, your palate's on fire. Um, so much more juicy vanilla on the 26 when you go back to it after the 10. Oh, I like oh, people yeah, who yeah, tell me a, those that's, things. That's, that's, a, that's very cool. Oh, yeah. That's really. Water really changes the dynamic of Ash and Pete. Okay. Well, having, yeah, I agree. Having added water to this, I'm not getting that Ash anymore. And yet it's brought out uh, Band-Aids and antiseptic. Yeah, you're right. It's so Particularly, much, particularly plastic Band-Aids. So much more savoury on the palate. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. Funny you should say that. I was just thinking Alan's Cool Mints. Cool Mints. All oh, right. Mm. That's, a bit, uh, that's up there with clinkers. As it's been a decade since I had Cool Mints or clinkers. Yeah, right. After those, yeah. yeah. Love Cool Mints. Oh, that was uh, that long, was a- long, long family drives in the country. We used oh. to drive from Sydney to Melbourne a lot, and uh, the little, little funny. Can- Remember, they used to come in a can. Yeah, the tin. Yeah, it's like a, the round yeah, tin. Yeah, yeah. Tin. <laughs> on, the, on the back seat of my brother and I, just scoffing through <laughs> cool things. Was- I think for me, it was my my nanny used to have the three X mints. Oh, yeah, 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 the roll yeah. of like uh, and uh, and steam rollers. There were there were mints called steam rollers. And oh, they, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can't you can't get those anymore, but they yeah. were yeah. They were um, uh, like lifesavers, but for snobby people. <laughs> I mean, it was a beat up old Ford Telstar. I wouldn't say it was just snobby. <laughs> well, you, you, you aspire to where you can, but <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, Alex, that's all good. Uh, brown sugar sweetness. There you go. James, like dark toffee, brown sugar notes, exactly, yep. Uh, hi from Lemon Time Lodge. Good to see you, David, and or Caroline Taylor. And or. <laughs> and, uh, and I thought the water really brought out an old hospital smell, like that iodine. Yeah, sort of well, I, I was yeah. certainly getting yeah. antiseptic, yeah. Mm, antiseptic note, yep. Oddly enough, I, I this is this is true. I actually got, a, I did, not admitted, but I had to attend um, the hospital at Bamore on Isla. I, oh, right. I had a... a, a it's very embarrassing, a long story. It wasn't serious, but I, no. I, I, they needed to put a needle in me and take some stuff out. So I actually presented to the hospital at on Isla. And so when people say Isla whiskey smell like 
hospitals and corridors. You can imagine me walking down the corridor with this doctor, as I was going to be saying, and I'm thinking, <laughs> <laughs> so I could I could really know what Isla Hospital corridor smelled like. But, uh, did you see the notes on your on your clipboard that said sniffs patients? <laughs> were they worried about you? <laughs> I've been driving for, for four days with my arm up on the on the uh, side of the window, and I developed a bursitis that had absolutely swollen. Oh, wow. So they, they came and drained it out. And there's this guy, uh, the doctor, who looked like a wizard out of Hogwarts. He had this amazing <laughs> long beard, lovely bloke, actually sensational. I have to say, the yeah, the, the, the medical treatment and service on Isla was was top notch, but. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a digression. I apologise for that. I was just, no, it's good story. That They're was, good. <laughs> when was that? It was two thousand and nine. That happened. So, yeah. And is your arm okay now? It's working well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, tens never need water. They are very self sufficient. Says James Vila Janice. James, it's so good to see you tuning in. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure. Um, and James says, uh, "Cool mints and gobstoppers for us. Some fruit gobstoppers. That's gobstoppers, right. Yeah. Well, that was a, that was a parental strategy, wasn't? It? That was how you got the kids to shut up. Did you ever? Did you ever get one of those mega gobstoppers? Oh, huge! Yeah, yeah, the yeah, big yeah, ones yeah, that, yeah, that look, yeah. take you two or three yeah. days to get through. Absolutely. You had to. They were, it got really gross. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't want to finish, you had to put it somewhere. And you're yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, put it on my desk, I guess. <laughs> Very cool. Um, so there's the tasting order. I've got it up permanently for us to see there. And uh, I forgot to mention, or that's okay because we're only a second gram in. If you're taking any photos of your of your setup, of your glassware, of your tasting pack, you enjoying a dram, would love to see it. You can tag us on Instagram at SMWS <laughs> underscore AUS. Quiet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> or, <I'm> just... <laughs> or you can. <laughs> Sorry. I'm trying to get through this one sentence. You can tag us on Instagram, SMWS underscore AUS. Of course, you can also um, hit us up on Twitter, SMWS underscore Australia, or you can also. Uh, Tag us on Facebook. Just put it in the Facebook group, which is where I think a lot of you are watching or, um, yeah, or if, unless they're on YouTube. Um, good good call from Darren there. He just said, did they find any blood in the whiskey circulating in your system? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a very cool comment. Yeah. Uh, agreed. That was perfect as it is, says Peter Sanderson. Good to see you, Peter. And, uh, yeah, did they find any blood in the whiskey circulating? <laughs> I mean, he's mostly man, but, you know. <laughs> um. What a versatile distillery. Um, when I got into whiskey and you read all the textbooks and everything you wanted to know about Isla, um, but, 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 but this distillery number 10 was <laughs> nearly, <laughs> nearly, uh, was renowned for being the unpeated one on, on, on the island. Um, and, and uh, you know, years later when, when you then taste these amazing smoky ones coming out of that, that, that house that was, you know, famous for not uh, having it, wow, versatile stuff. Very delicious, very tasty. <laughs> I didn't say it. <laughs> I almost had him. I almost uh, had him. Uh, and, and James reckons that AD is uh, 46% ABV. <laughs> that's cruel. I'm at, least, I'm at least 48, 49. Gee. <laughs> um, the poster behind me, Deputy, good to see you. Good to hear from you, mate. Have you got another new handle? Is this your new handle? Anyway, uh, that on, on that side is some of the... Um, some McLaren event posters that we did with them, and on this side is Peanuts. So there you go. As um, in Snoopy? Yeah. No, no, this side, this side. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> your, your camera's got me thrown here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> part man, part tasting machine. <laughs> you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna have to live down, down that arm. The, the, <laughs> that's, that's forever there now. Oh, there's worse things. Um, very cool. <laughs> What have I missed? What have I missed? <laughs> AD is always chill, never chill, filters. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Morsey, thank you. Is he qualified to tell dad jokes? No, so, no, he's not. Yeah. But yeah, it was a pretty good one. <laughs> so we're moving on to, we're moving back out of Pete now with number three, uh, 7.243. Whiskey number three and distillery number seven. That's it. I know there's a lot of, um, a lot of members love the distillery seven. Love well, distillery. why would you not? Exactly. Why would you not love exactly. it? It's, it's a remarkable distillery. And uh, if we're just to talk about this this particular distillery for a moment, this particular distillery. Well done. It's a. Thought well, you about to draw a long bow there. Yeah, yeah. You can see from the colour that we are in the deep, rich, and dried fruits profile here. Good profile to be in. Great profile. Uh, and it's a 16 year old uh, single malt Scotch whiskey. <laughs> it is not, however, a 16 year old um, single cask Scotch whiskey. It is. Called twinning because it's a little bit like 7.244 witchcraft that we had here uh, this month, which is great. 
Uh, this is two X bourbon barrels that have then been filled into an X sherry cask. Correct. Yep. I was going to say the sherry PX. Sorry. PX. PX butt. PX butt. PX is the type of X. The previous sherry that was in that butt. Pedro Jimenez. Pedro Jimenez, and it is oh, a Jimenez. You even got uh, uh, on the end. You doing it? He's got a lisp. No, that, that is correct. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm teasing, but you're, oh, yeah, you're, no, you're right. Okay. Well, look, and, and it's um. <laughs> Two ex bourbon barrels that were then filled into a ex Pedro Jimenez cask that shut up. That is a, that is a butt B U T, which implies that it was a five hundred liter uh, sized cask. So this is what we get. What we get from that is two things. One is why would a whiskey ca- a whiskey club that is dedicated to um, single cask whiskey be doing something like that? And the reason is we can thank the innovation of our panel of Ewan Campbell in particular, big shout out to Ewan for working on projects like this that uh, create interesting whiskies. And it's sort of like he's been able to do these things with our heresy range, our yeah. uh, blended malts and being able to do things like this. And this is not new, by the way, this is not new. The society actually experimented with some of these things back in the nineties and it's been doing things like this over the years. And this is not some big sort of blasphemy to single cast whiskey. It's just, um, it's just good whiskey. And it, if you put your nose in that, and tell me that you don't enjoy that because it's been two X bourbon barrels into a sherry butt, then I'll, I might believe you. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Finian, good to see you. Thank you for joining. Now, we uh, obviously um, had uh, had the witchcraft. We had witchcraft. That's and, right. and, you know, obviously very similar, some very, similar yep. stuff going some on. Similar stuff going on. And what well, I find this a really intriguing nose straight away because obviously just given the the, um, the history and the provenance of the casks involved here, the sherry is by no means domineering. No. It's, no. It, it adds a little bit of colour on the side rather than actually sort of being the footprint. Yeah. The, 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 yeah, the distillery character is still there. Yes. it's, it's yeah. and, and speaking of distillery character, this is one of those distilleries. Um, Andy Andy Mill from Southbury was talking about this a little bit last night. He touched on it last night with our Bal Blair exploration. Uh, this is one of those distilleries that is definitely an A grade malt. It is often referred to as a dressing malt for blenders. Top dresser. It, top dresser. Sorry, mm. yes, or yeah, top dresser. Um, that is a. This is sort of the, the the cream on the cake for blenders creating whiskey. And just think about that for a second. We're we're drinking mostly in this case single cask whiskey, uh, which is probably 0.01% of whiskey production worldwide. Like, we forget about that. I, I sometimes have to go, wow, like blended whiskey is still 80-something percent. And then single malt is a small portion, obviously, of that, of 19 or something percent, and then 1% would be single cask. It's a very small amount, and we get to enjoy this tonight with you, virtually at the very least. Interesting question from uh, Cosbani here. What are your thoughts on using a drop of carbonated water? Well, look, I've I've tried it. Uh, it didn't work for me. Um, I'm not a Scotch and soda guy, but uh, have you I've mucked ne- around with it? I've never added a drop of carbonated water. I've had whiskey sodas before. I've had highballs and whatnot. If you're doing it for that purpose, I think it's great. I love a good highball. In fact, my favourite hard highball is a Society 66 or 42 slice of lemon and, and soda. They make great highballs, the 66s. Um, I learned that from Lock on a Whiskey and Almond. He, that's how he makes his highballs. Um, this is, however, a drop of carbonated water. I don't think really will help out. I think it might, in fact, just confuse the flavour a little bit. A drop of water is fine, but carbonated, I don't know why why you might, but um, Dan Mather says. That's uh, a great comment, Dan. Dan, yeah. Hint of mocha, vanilla, almonds, quite oily, terrific mouthfeel. It is a terrific mouthfeel. I've just had a tiny little taste of that. We're sitting at 59.8%, which is actually surprisingly yeah. the same proof as the Yeah, I'm about time. to say we haven't strayed too far, have we? Not at all. Not even by 0.1. Now, Andrew, it's not unfair to say that you are quite fond of your sherry whiskies. It's been commented on in the past. (laughs) How do you like this one? How's this one sitting for you? You've just had a taste. Very, very tasty. Mm. Um, but not not in, not uh, look. Everything you said was true then. But uh, what where, where I guess uh, I'm I don't know. It sounds weird saying so. Uh, where I have a reputation. What people 
associate with me is is the sherry whiskies that are very rich oloroso. Yes, which yes, which yeah. this is not. No, this is not. This is not. Um, that's not to say there's anything uh, inferior or wrong about it. It's just, this is delicious. What I'm really – can you hear me struggling to get the words out? It's because my mouth is salivating. This has just brought a, an amazing juiciness mm. as my mouth is just producing all the saliva to, to deal with the wonderful flavours that are going on there. My tongue's going for a swim right now. That is, that is gorgeous. It's also safe to say that, I mean, comparing Oloroso to PX casks, I mean, we're sort of – I always associate – often associate – Ex Oloroso with, I guess, you know, fruitcake and a quite rounded profile and quite sort of, whereas PX I often associate with, like you're experiencing right now, like that slightly drier on the finish but slightly sweeter on the front. Yeah, but let's let's not lose sight of the fact that the, the PX contribution here was only one year. That's right. Of, of yeah. 16. Which, now, yeah. you and I have both had uh, casks that have spent significantly uh, or their whole maturation in PX. Uh, yep. Some Glendronic expressions come to come to mind. Yep. Um, and that's an altogether different beast. So I actually love the way that the PX and, and the sherry butt in this case here has actually added a dimension rather than overwhelmed the dimension. Yeah, I'll agree with that. It's added a layer of complexity to the overall spirit. As we said, we can still taste Distillery 7 in there. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Such a, a long mow finish. <laughs> Don't be cheeky, Luke. <laughs> Good to see you the other night, Luke, and that's yeah, quite a cheeky comment. Um, very cool, very cool. Peshwari naan on the nose. Wow. That's that's a very specific tasting. I like that. Yeah. Peshwari, I can't remember last time I had a Peshwari naan, though. I mean, I've had naan, like garlic naan and plain naan, but Peshwari naan, that's, that's very specific. Yeah, I like yeah that. indeed. That's a cinnamon, too. That's a there good is one. some cinnamon there. Yeah, yeah, I get the cinnamon. Yeah, absolutely. Like um, fresh cinnamon sticks. Like I was going to say the quill. The quill. Yeah, quills. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, quill. Sorry, I said sticks. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> hey, if you can have your Pedro Jimenez moment, I can have like <laughs> quills versus sticks moment. Ah. <laughs> Actually, it's pronounced quile. Oh, quiles. <laughs> Please try the fish. <laughs> 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 this is really tasty. I, I, I've said this to tastings before too. Sometimes I think it's a great injustice that we're, we're in a lineup and we're obliged to keep to a time schedule and, and, and move through. This this is a whiskey, um, if you've kept a little bit in, in your sample one, come back to this some other time and spend yeah. 30 minutes with it because this, this will just deliver and continue to improve and delight and satisfy. Wow. Again, uh, a fascinating distillery to visit. It's actually not open to, to visitors, um, so I don't know why I said that. But, but when you go there and, and see the place, uh, extraordinary what they've done inside. Um, it's in uh, owned by the Shivers Group these days, uh, which ultimately falls under Pernod Ricard. And uh, very automated, as, as all um, 12 of their 13 distilleries are these days. Uh, so, yeah, just a fascinating setup once you get inside. Mm. On me. It's it's a uh, when was this distillery founded? 1890, 1870? It's not it's not one of the super old ones. No, and it was it was, it was, it was, it was the late nineteenth century anyway. It was uh the, the Duffs, wasn't it? It was the Duff family. The same guys behind Glendronach. I thought that was Milton Duff. That as well. Do you know Mil Milton Duff? Uh, nothing to do with tonight's tasting, a little trivia, but it was founded on Milton Farm mm. by the Duff family. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Milton Duff. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah. No, I, had to, I was talking about it the other night with um, oh, right. the launch of 72.89. Of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those rare distillery names that actually makes sense, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> James has just said here it's sweeter with water. I I don't feel the need to add water. I added a little bit. Yeah, your I thoughts? Don't, I don't think it needs it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I can see sometimes people jumping in and out, which is great. So if you're watching tonight, really appreciate it. And um, for those who have just jumped in and are perhaps uh, a little bit behind the eight ball with us, we are the tasting order is on the screen there for your gathering tasting box. And... Uh, 
there there they are in all their glory. So we really appreciate you joining in tonight and tasting these whiskeys with us. Um, this is what the gathering is all about, coming together, whether it be in person or virtually. We've been very lucky to be able to do a few in-person events this month. But, um, yeah, that's the way it goes. Joel's asking how this compares to 7.244 Witchcraft, which uh, he's, he's purchased but hasn't opened yet. It looked very similar. Mm. Very, very similar. similar, yeah. Uh, yeah, very um, – I mean, they're one uh, – it's not often that even like I mean we see codes through the society where we have like whatever it might be like five dot five five versus five dot five six and they'll be worlds apart. The, the the numbers don't really give you any indication of of continuity. But in this case, two dot two four four and dot two four three are are quite remarkably similar. But they'll have um they'll obviously yeah. Be but uh, there well. was there was a reason for it. I mean they thought this is a great idea. Let's take two bourbon casks, marry them together in a in a in a PX butt. And they knew that that was going to be very popular and, and that wasn't going to go around the entire world. Yeah. So they did it yeah. twice. And then we in Australia were offered uh, witchcraft as well as some other countries. And mm. then the other countries got uh, got this one. And then they saved a bit, obviously, for the gathering packs as well. Yeah, 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 awesome. Mm. That's actually called planning ahead. Plan <laughs> yeah, wow. We do that occasionally. Yeah, it does happen. It does mm. happen, yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, there we go. That's that's a really that's a like I said lovely whiskey and I, I I'm going to echo Andrew's comments here. That is the kind of whiskey if you can keep even just a half dram or something like that kicking around because pour something to the glass maybe even after this tasting or on another night where you get to enjoy it. Um, take your time with it. It's one of those ones that's just going to keep syruping up in the glass almost. Syruping up. Oh, come you, on! Do you like you've that been one? talking to Mister Duckett <laughs> lately? Yeah. <laughs> G'day, Tim down there. Um, <laughs> I was just better. Okay, I'd be keen to get your comments. Uh, write in and tell us who thought that this was impacted either positively or negatively by being on the back of uh, a peated whiskey from Isla. You, you, you all, you know, re recalled in horror when you saw a peated whiskey was number two. Moving on to this one on the back of that, what did you think? Did, did yeah, it did, impact did you? Ruin it? Did, yeah, I mean, if, and if it did, was it a positive impact or a negative impact? You know, you know, when you finish like a really sort of like almost like like quite a savoury dish. And then you have the dessert afterwards. Mm. That's almost what's just happened for me. You have that sort of that dinner dish because we both added a bit of water to that ten, and we both remarked it got quite savoury. It got quite sort of like the the sweetness dropped off, but the sort of the charry baking came back in. And then we've gone to almost a bit of a desserty kind of dram there. Yeah, so, yeah, bit of an adventure. The the lineup is is different from from usual. So, um, gave it a splash, and I agree. Some people liking it with water, which is very cool to see, and um, not at all impacted. There we go. Um, oh, great question from Cos here. Uh, is it mainly islas that make better use of a drop or two of water or the higher proof dark char? Nothing to do with dark char. Don't let colour impact you or the, or, or the, the charring on the cask. Um, and I certainly would not say it was region specific. I don't think islas take water any better or any worse than some space mm -hmm. iders and lowlanders and all the rest. I think yeah. it just really comes down to the, the spirit character, uh, the wood it was in. Um, and what it's got to offer, and also its age. Age is probably the more important thing. Older whiskies do not take water very well. Older whiskies can be more fragile and delicate. You need to be very careful. Youthful whiskies tend to be able to take water. So I would say age is probably the more defining thing rather than regionality. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good one. I mean, I've said this before, and I'll, I'll use it as my rule of thumb if it's useful for you. For you. Uh, young ex bourbon barrel whiskey, almost always. Uh, sherry casks tread carefully. And old whiskey almost never. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Very good call. Yeah, that's just a rule of thumb. And you'll find it's, it it varies very much on the whiskey and and, and on the experience. And uh, Andrew and I tasted a a twenty three year old whiskey uh, recently that was that was fifty three or something percent. It was like that nice sweet spot at the proof, uh, and it actually did really well with water. And you mm. go, well, that's an old whiskey by anyone's measure, and it's uh, it, it held up really well. Um, ah, a fan of it coming off the back of a big, pe big peated, big person peated whiskey. Big person peated whiskey. <laughs> big person. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> uh, can't perceive a difference being made by the order. Yeah, awesome, Darren. Yeah. Uh, good, good to know. Yeah, see, so it just goes to show that it doesn't always have to be sort of like lighter, sweeter, heavier peated in a lineup. You can mix things around a bit. Have a bit of fun with the lineup. See what happens. But I think look, it was unique to this particular. Uh, cask and distillery. Yeah, like, I, I don't. I don't think we would have put a really massive, you know, uh, Lafroy in there, for example, and then gone on to something else. You know, you mean uh, a twenty nine? 
No, because I, I don't need to hide what's not I on don't, my Sure, no, that's yeah. fine. That's fine. I was yeah. just checking. I was just checking. <laughs> God, it would be uh, a very interesting thing if we could never, never say that. Never say that. I think um, we uh, – shall we pull the next one and let it breathe for a bit? Are you suggesting it needs a, a breathe? I don't know. I mean, it, it is a bit older. It's been cooped up in this little container. Yeah, yeah. All right. Here's the sound. There it is. Uh, 35. That was like me at the chiropractor the other night. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who um, know your German uh, or, or German uh, food, uh, Rumtopf, Bernenbrot and Stollen. <laughs> Not quite sure why I pronounced those the way I did, but anyway. I did actually do German at school for six years. <laughs> um, I did learn what this meant and I can't remember. Um, so there you go. I don't know Rumtopf. Uh, obviously, one of there is a bread and Stollen we were saying earlier. Stollen is Stollen. Uh, we get that uh, under that name here in Australia. Didn't bring my German dictionary with me. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so this is this is this is a fascinating whiskey for a few reasons. This is a distillery that uh, is a longtime cousin of the societies in many ways. It, we had a, a long-term relationship with the the company that owned this distillery and and whatnot. There's a, a whole lot of society history behind it which meant that we've seen some of the most, I'd say it's probably one of the most diverse outputs of spirit, of, of the codes in many ways. Well, uh, yeah, indeed, but uh, and there's a reason for it. For, for a long period of time, this was this distillery was almost uh, seen as, as an experimental mm. house. You know, if we're going to try something with our big well-known brand, let's try it with this one first. So a lot of stuff got done at this distillery. Um, and some of those experiments turned out to be absolutely delicious. The, the society ended up with a lot of those casks, and the experiments that did work were then uh, uh, utilised and employed and, and put to work at uh, the other distillery in that portfolio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And to think, this is rather cool, actually. This is distilled 27th of October 1995. We're drinking a 24-year-old single cask whiskey here, and the two cool things about that is that would have been the first year of relationship with those experimental casks. Ah, oh, no, I'm getting my dates wrong. It would have been 10 if, years. If you're out by 10 years. Sorry, yeah, that's okay, right. I'm close. I'm not even close. But it's, um. anyway, well, at the same time, it spent 24 years in a first fill ex-bourbon barrel. You know that moment, that, that look I just gave you then? That, yeah. That's the same look you gave me last time we did a virtual and I went yeah, off the rails. So <laughs> I've been, been waiting five weeks to get back in with that one. So. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Built up five weeks worth of waiting. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Hey, it's lockdown, dude. This yeah, lockdown. Yeah. Come on, yeah. But um, John, we're on uh, the fourth uh, whiskey of the night, and it is thirty-five dot two five nine. Thirty-fives have an elegant DNA. James Villa Janus, awesome comment. Yes, absolutely, and they really do. They do have an they have an elegant DNA. There's there's a certain spirit character to the thirty-fives that I love. And I love the experimentation and just, I mean, how many how many times also in this in this instance, how many times also do you get to ex experience a twenty four year old whiskey that's from a first fill bourbon barrel? Mm. I mean, that's that's absurd. I mean, that's that's like unheard of by most standards. And first fill, it's it's often seen first fill will will give the most influence, so it needs to sort of come out sooner. That's why we see a lot of great eight, nine, ten year old first fill whiskeys. And then after the second fill and refill, yeah, you can get a lot more time and a lot more. Uh, time in the oak because it's it's less active but provides a longer maturation, different levels of complexity, different flavours. Up to the 35, that's right, yes. Isn't Kopf, Kopf here? Well, Kopf is head, but it's not Kopf. It's Toff with a T. Toff. Oh, yeah. So, rum Toff. I think it's I think it's like a – it was like a rum pudding or something, I think I heard. Okay. It was, it was like a rum pudding. Well, that would be in keeping with the other items there. Burnenbrot. Well, you know, bread and stolen. So yeah, bread and stolen. What yeah. you're saying, it's, yeah. it's, it's a, a food. Oh, that's a cool. That's a cool comment, Joel. Reminds me of a, my grandparents' kitchen on the nose: jams, muesli, honey, all those lovely homemade things grandparents are known for. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thirty-five is a never in a hurry. That's right. Hints of Cotty's green cordial on the nose. What do you think of that? 
Uh, I don't get the green cordial. I'd have, I'd have come along for the ride with red. You're sort of hinting at like a sort of like a, a, a white sugar sweetness in a way then, aren't you? Sort of like that sort of almost artificial plastic sweetener thing. I, I don't really quite get that on this one, but. Again, another amazing mouth, uh, amazing mouthfeel. Incredible flavors, so fruity after twenty four years. Mm. I'm still nosing. This is this is yeah, offering up so much so far as well. Yeah, that's great. There's a slightly musty or leathery note on the nose, James. That's not unusual for a whiskey of this age. When you get into whiskies that are sort of pushing past twenty years, you often get that sort of like um, old leather brown couch, yeah. dusty cupboard. Uh, vintage bookshelves kind of thing. And that's a desirable note for me. I love those kind of things, especially if they're still integrated with a sense of vibrancy to the spirit and cast. But they can blow off too. Those, they, those they can characters blow they, can blow off. They can blow off. You swear you dram for a while. Have you tasted this yet? No, not yet. This is hot. Are you ready? This, 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 is, this has got 24-odd uh, years of, of oak um, just starting to overpower. I reckon this is one that could do with a splash of water. It's just me personally. Oh wow! I know what you mean. Mm. How's the how dry is that finish? Yeah. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> even the finish is a bit hot, isn't it? Yes. Wow. Just it sits right at the top of the throat. Ooh. Oh wow. Okay. And mango's covered in caster sugar. Yeah, that's a cool note. I'll I'll agree with that one. God, he's on fire, isn't he? You're 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 killing it tonight, James. That's awesome. Even spelled caster correctly too. I didn't. I didn't take note. Uh, of I did. Don't worry. Okay. Yep. Commonly misspelt word. John, it's so good to see you, mate. I get some sort of artificial sugar, but deep like some lolly raspberries or something. Well, that's that's so when mm. the comment came up about Cody's cordial, I, I said not green, but I could get some red and, and red, red, yeah, uh, red lolly raspberries. raspberries, you know. John, I hope you're well, mate. Really good to see you on the stream. I'm glad you're enjoying your pack tonight. Uh, I'm getting a bit of furniture polish on this. Yeah, again, again, that old sort of O-cedar, uh, yeah. old furniture polish. Um, when I was growing up uh, as a as a kid, my, my dad had a desk. Um it was his work desk out the back that had uh, dovetail joints all oh, yeah. over, all over it. It was a beautiful old desk, and a few times a year he'd he'd um, completely o it and and let the you know, the that's my like cedar yeah o cedar is that what it's called? Uh, we could only afford Mr Shane in our house, <laughs> and he had o cedar the, the <laughs> desk, <laughs> and, and uh, there, was, there was a smell about the house uh, which lasted I'd say a good day or two. Of that oc to soaking into the wood and really browning the wood down and, and making it quite beautiful and um, oiling the wood if you like and uh yeah my my closest reference to that is i used to play a lot of cricket as a kid and you would get your new bat and you get the linseed oil out and rubbing linseed oil into the timber similar sort of yeah thing. right yeah linseed oil but I, i'm not getting a linseed no i'm not, I'm not yeah. saying the, the no, note but no. I, I do get your comment about that That's associating wood, the oil and the wood. The wood yeah yeah, yeah. So Dan doesn't get the the heat on this one. That's fine. I mean, it's it's all like we said before. There's no rules. You, you get what you get. It's your yeah. it's your flavor preference. It's your palate, and everyone's going to have a very very different palate and experience with every whiskey. Joel's asked the question: Is it unusual for the society to label a 24 year old sweet fruit in mellow? I would say no. I mean, certainly the mellow makes sense. That the most older whiskies lose their aggressiveness, their volatility, and and they mellow out over time. So the mellow makes sense to me. Old whiskies can have um, uh, sweetness and they can be very fruity. So I don't think it's unusual at all. Uh, but, and I wouldn't call this on the nose or palate an old and dignified whiskey. No. You know what I mean by that? Mm. Like there's the, the, it, it's, it's, it's almost like the um, this discussion we've had before about deep, rich and dried fruits doesn't necessarily mean a sherry cask. We've had some, True. Ref, we've yeah. had some refill bourbon barrels that have mm. been in the deep, rich and dried fruits profile. The profile isn't an indicator of cask. That's just one element of all the aspects. That I, I think that's incredible association by members. And I'm guilty of it too. No, I see, so I I see so drink rich, yeah. deep, rich dried fruits and think, oh, sherry. And yeah, then, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah and exactly. it's, it's often not. So it's, it's weird that we've, mm. we've made that that mental link now that some of us have to decouple ourselves from. Look at 68.18. That was a whiskey and element exclusive cask that was a seven-year-old in the deep, rich and dried fruits profile and it was a recharred bourbon hogshead. Lovely whiskey. Oh, Craig, you're a – that's cheeky, mate. Don't – Bring that up on the screen. That's okay. <laughs> I, 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 was, I can't. I can't quite see that one, but um, that's harsh. I'll show it. It's a good line. I'll, I'll, it's a good line. I've read it. Yeah, okay. Okay. Wow, okay. I can all see it now. There we go. <laughs> Modeled on the can. <laughs> <laughs> they said the same things about John Howard when he first came. <laughs> I thought desiccated coconut was the one I always heard. <laughs> <laughs> um. 
Yeah, it's it's too lively to got old and dignified, but that's not a bad thing. See, it's a lively twenty four year old whiskey. Very lively. In very fact, lively. I'm reaching for the water. Yeah, uh, that's, that's an interesting whiskey. Very interesting. Very like full of life. Wow. Well, there's your fruity. <laughs> Add some water, folks. You'll get a basket full of fruit. You know what I honestly get? I get far more of the rum cake that they reference. Right. Okay. I get like the, 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 the sort of the raisins and rum cake coming through now. Oh, raisins is fruit. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, it's like I said, it's it's has been for a while one of my favorite codes that we see through at the Society of the 35s. A lot of members know that. It was one of those, it's one of those distilleries that we've seen such a diverse range of flavor profiles, age statements, cask types, especially cask types. Yeah. Um, you know, and in seeing that diversity of flavor come through it in such a, and even when we see something like the um, O to Joy, which 35.25. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's like, like 12 year old first Felix bourbon barrel, just such an honest, clean, amazing spirit. And I love those kind of things. I think it's got a great spirit quality to their their range. So, um. you know, having a splash of water, uh, stolen galore. Really getting the, the stolen coming through now. Yeah, yeah, I got you, man. Oh, I'm going to keep a smidge of that aside as well. How 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 unlike you? What a surprise. <laughs> I'll, I'll just put some 35 aside, shall I? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a smidge. <laughs> you can't see the 14 bottles that he's got down here. <laughs> no, not 14. Maybe like 16? 16. Sorry, did I, did I underestimate? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no. I, I've enjoyed a lot of 35s. I don't actually have that many at the moment, but anyway, there you go. Nothing but, wrong with that. There you go. I tell you, if there's, a, if there's a distillery to hang your hat on, it's a good one. Yeah, I mean, mm. I, I, I'll be honest. I mean, it's, it, it, we've, it's actually 135 and a few other codes have been hanging my hat on lately, but. And 93s, oh, 93s, can't get enough 93s. Love them. Good 93. Good 93. That is giving and giving and giving. I'm sorry we probably need to move along, but that is a no, lovely right, drop. Yeah. We can, we can, we I, can I think they, I think they got everything about that right. I think yeah. uh, once you added water, to be fair, uh, but I think they got the name right. I think they got the flavour profile right, and I think they got the time to bottle it right. Yeah, yeah. I don't think this, I think another year or two, this may have just... Turned. turned over the edge, yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah, a little bit too much of that first fill influence. I'm just, I'm blown away that a whiskey can go 24 years in a first fill ex bourbon barrel. And it, it, it must have been one of those sort of things where it peaked maybe early and then just sort of mellowed. Well, look, it's a function of uh, the spirit that was made at that time and and um, the activity of that cask, activity and, of that cask, and, and and what they what they filled it at, I guess. Yeah, uh, where it sat in the warehouse, so many things. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I think it. I think it works with a drop of water. That one, yeah, as well. I added a bit of water to mine, and I got more of that rum cake. Like I said, lovely stuff. Pun me. All right, so um, we that means we move on to whiskey number five in your gathering pack. I hope you've all been enjoying this so far. We, I know we have. We, we have a ball doing this. This is great. We just get to sit. And, uh, and talk about whiskey and drink whiskey. <laughs> we want and, and poke fun at one another and try and derail one another. <laughs> uh, and interrupt each other and throw stupid comments up sometimes as well. well. Why not? Come on. Hey, it's a gathering. Yeah, it's a gathering. It's a yeah. gathering. And, and and instead of being able to pass around a quake, which would be a little bit COVID irresponsible uh, <laughs> at the moment, it, we get to we get to share a few drams and, and have a bit of fun with it all. Now, there's a nickname for this distillery. We're moving on to 53.332. Um, storm tossed kelp on Isla Beach. If you downloaded the first version of the tasting map uh, online, we do apologize. It is not, in fact, a sleigh beach, it's an Isla Beach. Uh, the <laughs> I was missing on our first draft, and so that was the one that we announced, but it is an Isla Beach. So it's, um, it is a global gathering single cask from 53, the distillery that is uh, affectionately known as Mr. C on, on Isla, Mr. Consistent. There's, there's something about this distillery's output that is consistently good. Isn't it funny, and, and I, I hope I'm not casting aspersions here, but it's amazing how many people say that they love independent bottlings from this distillery mm. and less keen on the, the commercial expressions. I heard that exact line from Travis 
at Canberra the other night. I, so, I've heard it uh, so many times. A hundred like, times. Yeah. And I'm, that's not an exaggeration. A hundred times I would have heard that. The, the, the core range. I probably said it myself. There, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of my one of my favorite lines about this story was they said if we if we could stop making single malt tomorrow and we wouldn't even notice it on the sheet. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But it's um I think the name of this whiskey is probably the most apt flavor descriptor. Kelp on Isla Beach. And they, their PPM is at the same level as distillery 10 for their peated runs. Uh just um the- Actually, I'm embarrassed to say I don't know. No, it's not. Uh, no, because uh, Distillery 10, when they peat, go to 40. And this is and this, at- is this is 35. Oh, okay. Same, I'm, same I'm, as their thought, sis- thought it was about the same. But same as their sister distillery, which I'm allowed to say because it's not here on the table, uh, Lagavulin. Right. Yep. But that's that just goes to show, I mean, sitting around 35, 40, just how different. I mean, if, if you've got even a drop left of 10.195 in your glass, do a side by side of these two. They're very, very, very different whiskies. But I'm glad we're able to finish again on a peated whiskey in this instance. That's a meaty nose, says mm. James. Yeah, the kelp, fish meat. Kelp, yeah, abs- absolutely. And and almost touches of um, seaside. Uh, sorry, get this right. Seaweed washed up on the shore and just in the sun and starting to give off that aroma. Yeah, right. Sun drenched seaweed, yeah. And it's just freshly washed up. Bit of, wow. You, you, you know, a whiskey is impressing us when there's seven seconds of silence. <laughs> yeah, there's that, that, that noticing <laughs> silence. That was me going, hope he says something. I'm enjoying this. And he's saying <laughs> the same thing. Yeah, I'm saying the same thing. Uh, I find PPM inherently misleading given the change during maturation. Uh, I wouldn't say that. I'd say PPM is inherently misleading because it really depends where the peat comes from. Um, uh, and but, where it's measured. Uh, yeah, well, very, very true. Uh, but, you know, you look at uh, Ben Romick up in the in the Highlands and they brought out that whiskey that was peated to, was it 64 or 61? I can't remember now. But, you know, 64, big number. Mm. But it was Highland peat. It wasn't Isla peat. It had a completely different characteristic. And everyone who went out and bought that was then tremendously disappointed when they were expecting a massive smoke bomb that wasn't there. Also reminds me of a, a certain distillery that promotes their 300 ppm expressions that sometimes don't taste nearly as peated as some 55 ppm releases. Yeah, and yeah. That's, and the, but that's but, a, of a measuring measuring tool. It's a yard Well, uh, it's uh, a, actually, I, no, I don't think that's the end of the measurement. I think it's the, the way they distill and, and ferment. I mean, yeah. when, when the, yeah, the, yeah. their and fermentation the has a completely – but you're right, it's yeah. – this is the the PPM at, in the malt and the PPM when it comes out of the ferment and then the distillation is a completely different thing. And those are all engineered things. Mm. It's, it's no accident. No, no. Mm. I saw the word umami pop up on someone's comment before. That's that's a good call. Also depends heavily in the oak and maturation. Yes, that's Alex, what we were just saying in a way. Yeah. Oh, Alex, g'day. Good to see you. Uh, and... Joel says definitely got beef stock. Wow, like Bonox. Yeah, beef drink. Well, there's that umami. Yeah, yeah that yeah. umami note, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's nice. That's sweeter on the palate than I expected. Isn't it, Joe? Yeah. Mm. There's vanilla in that. Loads of vanilla, which is that, that bourbon bourbon cask coming home to roost. Again, this is making me salivate. Wow. <laughs> you dropped your bundle, haven't you? Yeah, I dropped my cards earlier. Don't worry about it. Here we go. It's it's a far um, it, it is a far tarrier and like far more tar and heavier than most fifty threes I've had recently. If that if that makes sense, it's, it's would it be fair to say most of the distillery? Sorry, most of the distillery fifty threes you've had lately have been older than this, though. No, not necessarily. No, okay. No, no, no. Okay. No. In fact, this one. In fact, a lot of them have recently been nine, ten, eleven. So it's okay. Uh, I mean, one of my roles, of course, is looking at what comes into the country and what's in the pipeline. And uh, one of the things that I've I've seen, uh, we have a few 53s um, coming down the line and they're a bit older than this. Mm, so. mm, mm. Including quite an old one coming. Wow. 
So, not, not bad. That's a, that's a tasting note, John. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> Smoked cot on the nose, but richer on the palate. Wow, that's a, I like that, Craig. That's a good one as well. Uh, picked up blue uh, pil pilchard bait that has been sitting on the pier in the sun. It reminds me of fishing in my youth. James, um, you've talked about your fishing in your youth before. I really like that comment. It's Pilcher. a similar thing, though, about uh, I, I said seaweed, and in this case, uh, you know, bait sitting in the sun. It's a very mm. – it's that coastal, briny, maritime um, note. And I find it fascinating when you find maritime characteristics in any whiskey from Distillery 53 because one of the things that, that this distillery is a feature of this distillery is that none of it is matured on Isla. Every single drop is tankered off the island and matured on, on the mainland. Sorry to um, oh. burst any bubbles that people may have had about the distillery there. But, no, uh, no. If you go, if you go to uh, the warehouse of this distillery, you'll see it's full of 6,000 casks of Lagavulin. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Uh, waking up on a Sunday morning and smelling Dad's Kipper's cooking. Oh, mm. that's a cool tasting note. That's so much better because I used to wake up and smell my dad's slippers and that was not nearly as nice. <laughs> Kippers in slippers, it could have been called. Cool. There you go. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> Uh, Good call from Craig there. Juices from the roasting pan. Absolutely. We're yeah. all getting that savoury um, Bonox meaty note. It's, uh, on the nose I am. But I'm, oh, I'm, let's see yeah, on the palate yeah. for me. Although, as I say, on the palate for me, there's a, there's a strong vanilla note hand in hand with it as well. I didn't have water for that, but I also don't want to. No, I don't want it. I've, I have no I'm intention really of adding water. It's just sitting at 58 or something. It's a very pleasant 58. Yeah. Wow. What a lovely drop. You're still in your youth, James. There you are, James. Uh, and um, happy birthday again. It's uh, So there you go. Oh, that's lovely. It's almost a dessert either, isn't it? Which, which is, sounds silly because mm. we've just been talking about umami and bonnocks and meat and beef and all the rest of it, but it's a dessert either. And it's been strange. Like uh, I think this, this tasting order has been um, strangely enlightening. It's it's mm. it's taken us on a journey through through the flavors, which is what the society is all about. Is these, yeah. this journey in flavors of, of, and this and gathering together and enjoying these kind of whiskies? Why not? Geographically, it's been a good journey as well. I mean, obviously, two from Isla in, in close yeah. proximity. Yeah. In fact, these two are the two Islas we've had are uh, our next door neighbors, pretty much. Mm. Um, but around the rest of the country, it's been quite a quite a jaunt. Quite a jaunt. <laughs> Yeah, it has been actually. Mm. I'm going to pour a little bit more of that one. I like that one. Yes. I'm <laughs> I don't think I need to hold on to much of that one. There we go. I'm now regretting the decision to drive here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which also don't drink and drive. <laughs> yes. Which is why... All of mine have got a lot left in them. Still. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're I'm, doing, I'm being, I'm you're doing fine, the right yeah. thing. You're fine. Uh, I got subtle notes of fried ice cream you'd have at your local Chinese restaurant. Oh, good oh, wow. call. That is a very that cool tasting very note. That's very accurate. Very cool tasting note. And uh, sip of the other, sip of the seven after the fifty-three, and it's like enjoying a decadent apricot and white chocolate dessert. Keenan, what a tasting note! Seriously, that's incredible. Wow. Roscoe, good to see you. Welcome aboard, my friend. <laughs> need, need to see you in the flesh sometime soon. But... <laughs> Although you're not on, you haven't authorized your stream yard, you're one of like two people that call me Matthew. So, yeah, I, I know that's you, Ross. <laughs> that's that's fair enough. Um, and uh, Joel, I got subtle. Oh, we already said that one. I'm going to repeat myself. There we go. And um, water brings out more of the palate vanilla to the nose. Mm. Yeah, I've, I've been talking about vanilla for five minutes. It's, uh, it's there in spades. I think I'm gonna, I still don't want to add water to it. I will. I'll give it a go. See what happens. Do it. Do it. Do it now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. Just, uh, that's another comment which we won't put up on the screen. But Very, very droll, Ross. Very droll. Very droll, Ross. Well done. Well, um, that's remarkable. That's a really lovely way to finish for us, I think. That's, yeah, that's a lovely and, and, and just reminds you why this distillery is so adored. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm. 
Um, up next from the Society will be our um, October upturn next Friday. We're really looking forward to, which is um, already lots of comments coming in saying it's probably one of the most diverse ones we've seen this year, which has been really great to see. Thank you. There's there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. Yeah. And it's it's diverse. It's fun. It's it's full of all sorts of flavors. And there's um there's it also includes the special release of seventy two point eight nine, which uh, I encourage you to get one. It helps whiskey and almond out. It's also a fantastic bottling. It's uh it's a rich fantastic sweet and spicy spicy and sweet i should say um single cask that they've picked out uh as a whiskey that they enjoy um best dram of the night there you go yeah, I, 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 52. I have to i, I concur if i had yeah. to rank them I'd, I'd, i this would be my first i'd have put uh distillery seven second and uh 35 third Ooh. 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 I, uh, i'm gonna go with i'm gonna go with 53 then 26 Wow. Yeah, I okay. really like that yeah, 26. Right. And, that was, and, and, it had a bit too much heat for me. And then the seven. Yeah, anyway. They're all very interesting in their own way. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what an awesome tasting. Thank you, James. You know what? You are the star of this show. Yes, absolutely. Your yeah. tasting notes were unbelievable. Well done tonight. And uh, it's nice to it's nice enter the lineup given it's Susie's birthday. Happy birthday, Susie, again. Indeed. I know. You, there you go. Slunge of our Susie. I agree. My favorite from lineup. <laughs> Joel, yes, there is plans. We're speaking with Jason. He's going to have a, a festive event coming up very soon. We're, we're working with him. I can't get over there, obviously, at the moment. But, um, well, I probably could, actually. I think WA is pretty fairly relaxed now, but see how we go. And uh, yes, it does. I can't see who's asking that question, um, but uh, Nick Husek, sorry. Um, the 72.89 does come. With the custom uh, bandana handkerchief pirates thing going on here, which has all the lovely emblems all over it and all the all the flavor profiles sitting on it, so yes, it does. Can I just give a shout out? I've just seen her name come up. Beck, didn't know you were watching. Beck, good to see you here. Look forward to seeing you soon. <laughs> good to see you, Beck. Hope you're well. Seven do, didn't do it for me. Sorry, AD. That's all right. Each of their own. There's no rules. Yeah. Uh, great tasting. The seven thirty-five and fifty-three are all brilliant. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Really appreciate you all being a part of The Gathering for 2020. It's been an awesome week. Uh, the Gathering, however, continues yep. next week for Hobart. Hobart, I think it's either almost completely booked out or there might just be a small handful of tickets left. Your expert society ambassador, Tom Roth, is going to be hosting that. And uh, if you don't know Tom yet in Tassie, you should. <laughs> uh, he's, he's a total gun, lovely guy. Forced to be reckoned with. Uh, forced to be reckoned with indeed and, uh, and a moustache to be twirled. So, indeed, <laughs> thank you so much, everyone, always for tuning in, and we'll see you all soon. Thank you, Andrew. Stay safe. Well Stay done, my friend. Thank you so much. Another fantastic much. Another fantastic evening. Thank you very much, and we'll see you all soon. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>